Hello and welcome back to Let's Play White Day, a labyrinth named School. I doubt this recording will go well because of how delayed it looked there. I mean, if I if the Capricorn software had loaded before I got Audacity up, it would have given it time to set in, but it looks like it's probably going to be laggy on the playback. And uh, the previous part, which was the first part, recorded a couple of days ago, a few days ago, I can't even remember. It was definitely a few days ago, but I can't remember specifically how many days. But, essentially, I had to use freaking Movie Maker, and it took me a whole evening to edit the previous part. Because the capture card, and I hope it doesn't do the same thing again, it's like the actual file that the capture card records isn't recognizable by Camtasia so I have it converted to mp4 and the mp4 looked way too dark so I'd have to use Movie Maker because Movie Maker is able to like recognize the file for the original but even that's a pain in the ass because so I guess it's because how big the file size is Movie Maker ends up like it's like the equivalent of when, like, my recordings, like, sometimes have that horrible video skipping where I have to sync the audio back up, but it's far worse where the rest of the video is pretty much just blank. So I have to save it twice just to get it to look any good. Hopefully that doesn't have any- oh. Oh. I guess it didn't autosave. Well, it looks like we're gonna be playing a new game, apparently. Please tell me that everything else is still the same though, right? Yeah, that's still said the same. Damn it! Because I wasn't sure, you know. Oh wait. No, it says the auditorium, so it's not. Yeah boy. Rough start. A rough start to this LP right here. But I finally got a decent amount of space so I can try to record more than one part this time, I guess. It's just it takes up so much space, but I was right, I had a theory, right? That this LP is gonna be similar to like I'm still recording Resident Evil 2 as I'm recording this. And with that, the file size after editing it is very reasonable. Compared to, say, well, I'd imagine I would have started uploading for it by the point this LP is, starts uploading. But Spyro reignited, Spyro the Dragon, specifically. It's like, when I record for that, it tends to take up considerably more, and I imagine that's because there's a lot more detail in the game compared to this one and Resident Evil 2. So this one's closer to Resident Evil 2 in that way. So now we got the tutorials again, but this time right from the get-go. Run with L1 and crouch with square. You can either run or crouch. You're likely to be discovered by a chance when you're crouching. Wait, less likely, I mean. You'll feel dizzy if you run for too long. Take a break. Save! You can save the game using the bulletin boards throughout the school. If you are dead or have quit in the middle of the game, you can continue from the last save point. Please note that any unsaved data will be lost. I wonder if it's only on hell mode that it autosaves. I don't know. Because it feels like it should have autosaved at least after we'd interacted with what's her face, you know? Let's just pick up all the shit all over again. So it's pretty much the previous part, only sort of speedrun. <laughs> What a pain in the ass. Documents, blah blah blah, you can find blah 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 blah. Can I pick this up? Yeah, I picked that up in the previous part as well. Also, the, the uh, clips I'd use from that freaking. Uh, brief video I did on the original White Day all those years ago. I was like, Jesus Christ, that's from 2012? I mean, my God, I, it's just, it's insane. There's something I overlooked in here, by the way. It's right up here. Cigarettes. 
Something that no student should carry. It was probably hidden by some delinquents. Roseanne! Yeah, I was wondering about that one. I was like, there was something else that's like in the previous part. When it was in the girls' toilets, where I was just like, there was something up here, but no, it's in the boys' toilets. So, um, This time, hopefully, we'll see what I mean about how the uh, tutorials being kind of annoying. God damn it, I forget what button is. I think it's just, yeah, options. It's like it notifies you every step of the way, more or less. Blah 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 and also this didn't show because Movie Maker screwed up on the recording. But essentially it's this thing right here. As a hurl I can't figure out its purpose. Like I said it's in the previous part though. It's this game has a lot of stuff like that where it's just like so uh does that have any relevance? Yes, it does, but not till later on. Like, a point where you'd be like, not even think about it, more or less. But you'd, it's, there's, there's a lot of backtracking, essentially, that you gotta do in this game if you want to, like, get everything. It's kind of a pain in the ass. Honestly, I feel like the uh, next playthroughs after this one, like, I. Like, I'm gonna do at least how many playthroughs would I do? It's like there's three characters, really, and they each have like two endings. And I'm gonna go for the one that I got, along with the alternate ending for that character as well. Then the next playthrough, maybe play it on normal mode, go for a different character, and then go on to another character after that, and then. Like, after that, do the extra character one, and then after that, finally play on hell mode to get the best ending for the, uh, main heron, whatever, you know, the main female character, So Young Han, because, you know, it plays a very, uh, big emphasis on her, doesn't it? It's, like, in the intro, it's just like, oh, I was focused on her, so she must be the main one. So save her best ending for last, you know. Should... Actually, I don't think there's anything in those ones. You got a map! No, it was yeah, trampled. Hey, wait, what? Oh, it even takes you back to that as well, nice. One thing that you're gonna wanna do in this game a lot is... When you leave a room... Be sure to turn off the light. You're just like, why? There's no danger yet, but of course, it's a horror game, they're not gonna... Well, some horror games aren't very, uh, subtle at all, they just throw you right in, but... This is old school, man. This is like... You know, it's weird, really. You see games like this a lot nowadays, but if you think about it, the original came out in, like, what, 2001? So does that make it kind of ahead of its time, because... Because only in kind of recent years, well, it's it's mostly since Amnesia came out that a lot of games like this kind of feel more common. But back in 2001, it doesn't feel like it would have been as common. I mean, back then, Silent Hill was still in its peak days, man. It's just... And then you got a game that was like this, but, you know, not quite as detailed and the characters looked far creepier and you know in the character uh, costume select thing you can actually use the original models from the original game but the downside is they don't blink in this version when you do that so they look far more terrifying <laughs> obviously that wasn't intentional it must have just been limitations of the time hmm how do we get in? Yeah, I wonder how we can do it. <gasps> oh my, you totally startled me just then. Oh, I've seen him. He's 
a new transfer student. Hmm, really? Anyway, I'm leaving. See ya! I'm Sung Ah Kim, homeroom 8. I behave me lady. Hmm, this was out of the blue. But it's nice to meet you. So, why did you come to school at this hour? You know, in the previous part, I showed like clips from the uh, video I did on the uh, original. Even though dialogue was different back then, it was just like, where it's just like, <laughs> that's a funny name. Ah, oh, sorry. I mean, to be fair, it was an odd name. I'd use Blue Dragon as a name in that one, but here you just got his the protagonist's proper name. Uh, I left something here. Yeah? Heck, I the whole scenario you. plays out a bit you different, really. You are going to help me out. I mean, in the original, an alarm just goes off and just freaking... You get the worst puzzle from the get-go. Where you got this annoying alarm going on and you've got to solve the puzzle while the annoying alarm is persistently playing in the background. So, the scenario is quite different, but it is pretty much, for the most part, the same game. But with, you know, up-to-date graphics. Not sure how much the... Well, there's quite a few differences, like... There's other stuff in the game as well that probably the original did better, and some things that this uh, remake of sorts kind of improves on, but... Whatever, let's continue. Jesus Christ, the delay on the capture card is insane. It's worse than when I record off the PS3. It's like, you know, like I just said there, like on the PS3, it would be like maybe one and a half, two seconds delay. This, it looks like there's three or four seconds at least of delay. It's insane. Well, if you don't count the previous part, I guess. Because that's what kind of helped you. Why? Worried I want something weird? Oh, You know, this bit was actually in the original, but it didn't play out like this. I mean, you had to go up there, but they're doing it differently in this version. You know, they probably changed that, actually, because, you know... That annoying alarm playing throughout the whole thing in the original. They probably realized that. They're just like, yeah, that's probably just annoying as shit, really, isn't it? So let's change it, essentially, to, you know, make it so that it's not as annoying. Let's not annoy her this time, I guess. Takes up time doing so anyway, so... Oh yeah, by the way, uh, where is it? We can actually get to see it this time, hopefully. This fly looks like Chi Hyun. We don't even know her name yet, because she di hasn't introduced herself yet, but she's the girl with the glasses. You see, you get these things around you a lot, but you're just like, hmm, but there never seems to be anything there. Unlike the other one. Oh, wait, what's that? No. Nope. You don't have a hole in that one. There's also something else. These things right over here. It's like, huh. 
But it looks like you can't interact with it at all, and it's because you can't interact with it now. But you can later, but only on hard mode, I think, and above. Although, maybe you can also get it on, I don't know, normal mode as well, I don't know. Because there's some things that are deliberately blocked off in lower difficulties that you can't do unless you're playing on high difficulties. You essentially need really specific keys. We'll get into that much later on. It's a bit of a pain in the ass. A wire cutter, a simple wire cutter. It can be used to cut fences and small wires. Especially going forward with this LP, the idea is, you know, not to uh, record, like, say, over 30 minutes, or below 30 minutes is the goal. So hopefully I can get, you know, a decent amount of progress in these parts. Because the first playthrough is probably going to be the longest playthrough of the playthroughs. It's like, like I said, I'll do a couple of playthroughs to get all the endings. And also, like, at the end, kind of get the best ending on hell mode. Which is going to be a pain in the ass, because, like, it's not just that you can't save and have to rely on the autosave. It's like, you know how I said the pens save the game? Well, in hell mode, every time... You quit the game, so essentially any time you're just like, okay, uh, that's enough progress for that, so you leave the game at that, uses up a pen. And if you die in the game, you also use up a pen. And if you don't have any pens left, well, the game is over, essentially. Game over, you can't continue that save file. It's a pain there, so you got to clear hell mode pretty much in, like, just one or two sittings, really. It, I mean, unless you get really lucky and don't get killed much, if at all, because there's a plenty enough pens to find, but... Anyways, construction area note. Lighting repair work in the first floor of the main building. The workshop's wiring will be a larger job than anticipated. The repair calls for more extensive construction work. Removal of the ventilation connecting the workshop, home economics room, and the bathrooms will be necessary. See this right here? It has an assortment of tools. It's like, why can't we examine it? Well, this will come into play soon as well. It's like, huh? 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 Phone? Can't interact with phone. That, that's always bugged me every time I play for this. I'm just like, oh wait, I have to pick up that. It always bugged me. I'm just like, why does the phone go off? I mean, it's obvious to just kind of be a bit of atmosphere, but... There are, there's at least one other, well, actually, it might be two even. We'll get to it when we get to it. It's just a bit of atmosphere there. Impactful the first time, but when I played for the game multiple times, you know, a lot of it kind of loses its impact. The trouble with a game that's pretty much like, hey, play for the game multiple times to get all the endings and unlock the one costume you get for completing every ending, which I find is a bit bullshit, Consider how many costumes there are, but most of them are DLC, it's kind of bullshit, they could have made it so that, like, if you achieve, like, it's like, for example, her costume, So Young Han's co costume, and So uh, Ji Hyun, and the other girl who's the extra character, they all have costumes that are unlocked by getting all of their endings, essentially, which is straightforward. And then there's, like, other characters as well that have more obscure ways to get the costume. Like, the protagonist here, he's just got his default clothes, but he's got an extra costume that you unlock by completing the ghost collection. Then there's another character whose extra costume is unlocked by getting all of these figurines that you can only obtain on hell mode. And then another one where you have to complete all the freaking endings on every difficulty. But it doesn't count the extra cat for some reason to unlock it, so I guess that's one saving grace, but it still was a pain in the ass. I mean, why couldn't they make all the other costumes unlockable? Why did you do this? Why does it always have to be DLC? Don't you think we'll need something like wire cutters to cut the metal screen? Yeah, I already got that. Let's, let's get to the point.
who closed the door? Well, that was a thing that happened. <laughs> he doesn't react at all. You get, like, a text message for the hints thing on normal and all that. Which gives you a really stupid hint. It's just like, oh, beware of the janitor. It's just like, no shit. He just freaking probably killed that guy. It's just like, what the hell, man? Puzzles. Yet they just, well, it's because the tutorial is different from that, though. It doesn't, it's only for the very first section of the game that you get these. Some puzzles need to be solved using the cursor. You can hold on the area where the cursor changes to a hand. Click the X button and you can solve puzzles. The puzzles are ridiculously easy. In this case, anyway. But some of the more kind of, uh... Well, some of them, let's just say, aren't quite as straightforward as you'd think. But once you figure them out the first time, you can solve them easily because you know how they work. But many puzzles in this game gave me a lot of trouble the first playthrough. It's like, it kind of randomizes some things, but for the most part it's all remains the same. So it makes getting through the game a lot easier. Now this alarm, as annoying as it is, is way better than the one in the original. And we're, like, instantly in the room where the alarm is. So we'd be able to solve that situation. And also this right here. I click on this, the alarm stops. Doesn't work like that in the original. Doesn't matter what you do, it plays in the background. Installation engineers now to the pre-existing wiring is twisted and the metal wires are seriously recorded. Co corroded. It will take a few more days to fix this mess. The case of the corrosion is an... If the corrosion leads to an overload, let's trigger in the alarm to go off. It can be shut down temporarily by connecting the third and fourth sockets. So it's pretty straightforward. I don't think the uh, puzzle was all that complicated in the original. I think some people had some confusion with it, but I can't remember. But it didn't seem all that hard, but this one's even more easy. Metal token, a wooden token that has the metal symbol on it. It gives off a lucky vibe. Home economics classroom key, the key that unlocks the home economics classroom. Uh, yeah, that key, and maybe even the tokens, I can't remember. But that key was definitely not in the original. Because the home economics room, which is right next to this, which is the reason why she's enlisted our help to get the key to that room. Well, in the original, that didn't happen. You could actually go into the home economics room right from the get-go. In this version, though, you don't actually get to go into that room at all, with the exception of hell mode. I think you, you can access it later on in hard mode as well. I'm not... I can't fully remember. And also as the extra character. That's the only times you'd be able to access that room. It's kind of odd. It's like, when I played for it originally, I was like... What's in that room, man? It's like the one room that you could never seem to get to. And it's just always bugged me as a result. Until I, you know, played to see Huh. Not bad. Thanks a lot. Next time, do it on your own. This school seems dangerous. I think the Janus is crazy, too. You're not trying to scare me, are you? I'm not that gullible. Oh, but did you know? This school used to be a hospital during the Korean War. Rumor has it the whole school is haunted because so many people died here during that time. Maybe the rumor's true. 
I mean, especially on a night like this. Oh! <laughs> Did I scare you? I guess you don't like ghost stories, huh? <laughs> oh, the doors are probably all locked by now. They lock all the doors after 10. Except for the lecture hall lobby, that is. If we want to leave, we have to go to the lecture hall. You know the new building, lecture hall, and here are all connected, right? Here. This is the key to that hallway there. Could you open it on your way out? Go ahead. I still have something to do. Yeah, did you, like, just like... <laughs> oh. Main building, one central hallway key. A key that unlocks the fire shutter on the first floor of the central hallway in main building one. Anyways. It's just like I didn't say anything during the cutscene, just let it play out, you know. But that's always bugged me, is that when she says the Korean War, it's like on war, it gets, the dialogue gets cut off. Like the voice acting just kind of goes right into the next sentence without it finishing properly. And that's always bugged me. It's like, you can also have the voice acting in Korean, and I think it flows better there, where it doesn't get cut off randomly. It only seems to be in that scene, this is the only one I noticed, I think. If I recall, that has anything like that, where it just awkwardly cuts off the dialogue. But anyways, we're up to 27 minutes here, so I'll record the next part immediately after. Hopefully the recording isn't complete ass. We can only hope. I will see you next time, viewers. See you next time.